Have you ever wondered what it's like to create 3D models in VR? Well, today I wanna to show you how I use virtual reality to both create and 3D print my version of the Frontman mask from Squid Game. So I did a majority of the work in a program called Gravity Sketch using my Oculus Quest 2, but I also did some of the work in Blender and Fusion 360, which I'll go over a little bit later on in the video. For now, let's go ahead and jump into Gravity Sketch. So this is what it'll look like when you get the program open. There are a number of different environments that you can choose from. I like this warehouse the most, but there is another option to create your own custom environments, which is also pretty cool. I just haven't messed with it too much. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm pulling out my reference images and getting them into the environment. These images are reference images that I gathered ahead of time. The way it works is Gravity Sketch gives you a URL and you can upload reference images or other 3D models to that URL and then you are able to access them from within the program. What you see me doing right here is I'm creating a couple separate layers and then you'll see me drag and drop all of those reference images into one layer that assigns them to the layer and then I'm going to be creating my model in a separate layer. Another really cool feature in Gravity Sketch is they have different mannequins and mannequin parts that you can use to create your models around. So the way I have this set up is I imported the male mannequin head and I turned on the mirror function so it mirrors everything across the Y axis and I got to work. If you're unfamiliar with subdivision surface modeling, basically what I'm going to be doing from here is moving and extruding around the different vertices, edges, and faces to create all of the different features that I want. And what you see me doing right here is I'm just naming that layer and then I'm going to be going in and making this layer a little bit see-through. Um, it's a little bit easier, I found, to turn the visibility down just a little bit. You can kind of see a little bit better what you're doing. Now I have to mention, I'm pretty new to this style of 3D modeling overall. I've been working in Blender probably for about a year uh, trying to learn how to do subdivision surface modeling and a lot of other things within Blender. But all that to say, doing this within Gravity Sketch is extremely intuitive. Being able to grab these different vertices and move them around, kind of feeling like you're in that virtual space. It's, it's so much different than modeling in Blender or other programs that are similar. But back to the mask. So what you'll see me start doing from here is I'm gonna start grabbing these edges and extruding them out to create the different features of the mask. The way the controls work is you grab your edges or vertices with your lower trigger, and then if you're holding an edge with your lower trigger, you squeeze the upper trigger and pull it out, and you've got your new edges. Uh, this is that part that's really intuitive because you can move in the X, Y, and Z directions and rotate in any direction all just while squeezing it and pulling it. So in Blender or other programs, you have to do it in a lot more steps and it's just different visualizing it, I guess. For the sake of this video not being way long and boring, I have cut out a lot of the, the rest of this modeling process. It took me about two hours overall to create this model. Um, I kind of I attribute that to me being, you know, fairly beginner at this style of modeling. And as I mentioned before, I could have gotten better reference images. So as you'll see, I spend a good bit of time looking back and forth at my reference images. So um, we fast forward a little bit and after a while, I kind of started to get my flow down. There's certain sections of this mask that were a little bit easier to kind of figure out based off of my images versus other sections that took me a little bit longer. Now I did reach a certain point where I was having a really hard time seeing the outer features. So I came back to it the next night. I gathered some better reference images from some, I guess, better lit scenes within the show. And that helped me out a lot. I was able to kind of determine how the outer edges and how it's supposed to wrap around the outsides of the face. And I was able to kind of finish up the rest of the, the major features of the mask pretty quickly from there. Next, I wanted to get a little bit of a different perspective on the mask, so I gave it a material close to what you see in the show, and I put it into a different environment just to see what might need to be changed, and I noticed that it didn't seem to fit around a human face too, too well the way I initially had it modeled. Even though I was modeling it around a mannequin, it's just sometimes seeing it in a different light and different environment can show you things that you didn't see before. My goals with this mask were to make it really, really show accurate, but also to be comfortable to wear. And I've actually never modeled cosplay stuff or a wearable mask. So this entire process was 
a, a big learning experience for me and I, you know very intuitive in gravity sketch as i said it probably would have taken me longer to do this in blender or in other programs as you can see i changed the material and the lighting again i probably did this three or four times and looked at it from as many different perspectives as i could and at this point i was pretty happy with it uh, but the work isn't done yet, so I went ahead and snapped a couple photos. There's a cool little camera feature in Gravity Sketch. And then I exported the model as a .obj and got it ready to go into Blender. Once I had the file uploaded into Blender, I wanted to do a few things. First thing, once I saw it from, once again, another perspective, I decided to go into edit mode and make a few minor adjustments to the overall shape. I felt like his upper brow needed to be a little bit wider and his, I guess, uh, outer chin needed to be a little bit more slim. So this was the slightly tweaked version. And then from there, I gave it a solidify modifier to make it about three millimeters thick. After I solidified the mask, I added these little features into the side that would be used to hold some mask straps into place. I didn't want to just put holes through the side of the mask because in the show it looks like the straps are actually kind of tucked in on the inside. So that's how I wanted to make it. But from there I went ahead and just kind of checked it out from upside down. And I did make a few edits to the inside to help minimize the supports that would be needed for the model. I designed the mask to be printed upside down. I figured that would be the easiest way to minimize supports. So pretty much the only place that needs supports is in those eye slots. But speaking of the eye slots, the little grates that go into the eyes, I designed those in Fusion 360. I completely forgot to record any of that and it seems as though I forgot to save that file. So I have the STLs for them, I just don't have the Fusion 360 file for these little eye grate thingies anymore. But after I got all that printed up, I super glued the eye grates into the eye slots and then I used some one inch wide elastic strapping that I got off of Amazon for the mask straps and I ended up being really happy with the finished result. Let me know what you think about it and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more content like this.